Can I ask you this? What will you be willing to spend to be free from NEPA hassle, as in totally gone? You have 247 electricity. Will you be willing to spend up to 200,000 Naira? If yes is your answer, then you need to watch this video to the end because I will explain how you can get that. So this video is for somebody who is looking for an affordable way to get 24-7 electricity. I'm going to be reading from my notes so you might be seeing me look down. One mistake I found out from talking to people and reading online is that a lot of people ask questions like this. How much will it cost me to get a 5 kVA inverter in my house? that will take care of totally of everything that I need in my house, my AC, my electric kettle, my microwave and everything. Is it possible to run your whole house on inverter? Yes. Is it cheap? No. So this is what I advise people who can afford it. For those people that can afford it, maybe in their house they're consuming, they, they require 10,000 watts in their house and they need 10,000 watts inverter in their house or office. If they can afford it, all well and good. It's going to be in millions, but for those, this video is for those people who can't afford that, but still want to enjoy 24 seven electricity. This is how I would advise you to start. First, look at what you miss when you don't have electricity. Think about it in order of priority. What are the things that I miss? So I'm going to do, be doing this for myself. You can also do it for yourself. Take a pen, list out what you miss. For me, the number one thing that I miss when I don't have electricity is first, my AC and my fan. I live in Nigeria where the weather is most of the most almost throughout the year is hot so I need my fan or my AC so what I miss first is my fan the second thing is power to charge my laptop and my phone I need that the third is my light bulbs I need my light bulbs to be on especially in the night and the fourth is TV I need the TV to be on the fifth is my fridge and freezer. The sixth is my microwave, blenders, and uh, uh, iron and other things in the house. And from that, other things comes after. What do I need to do and what do you need to do? First is look at that and pick the things that you know you cannot do without. Things that you know you really need to be running 24 seven. So for me, my first four things are the things that I need to be running 24 seven. Number one is I need my fan to be running. I, if I have fan and I don't have AC, I can, I, I can do with that. Second thing is I need my laptop or a phone to be charged. Third is I need the lighting, uh, lighting points in the house, the bulbs to come on. And the fourth is I need the TV to be on for my kids. After I've listed these four things that I need, other things like my fridge and freezer, because of where I stay, I get, uh, I mean, at least 10, 12 hours of electricity. So I'm fine. If my fridge doesn't run for 10 hours, I think I'm still good. Uh, but for you, if you are living in a place maybe where you get two to three hours and you need your fridge to be running, then you might need to go for a higher, um, inverter not the one that i'll be recommending to you so let's start a little bit of arithmetic here we are not going to go i mean details into physics and calculating energy and uh, doing the ampere and voltage and all those things and 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 what that is for the technicians they will do an accurate if you need this you can consult any technician a solar technician or inverter technician they would be able to recommend they will do a proper calculation for you and recommend what you need for your house but we're just going to do simple arithmetic here so the first thing is for me what i need in my house is i need my fan 
on the average most fans range their water their consumption ranges between 40 watts and 150 watts if you're using those ones like those ones in churches and public places the big fans those ones that make noise they're about 150 watts if you're using like the smaller ones the pro fans like the rechargeable ones they are between 40 and 60 watts so let's just say that you have a fan like in my house i have a 50 watts fan three of it so let's say you have three 50 watts fan and that is going to be a 150 watt note it down 150 second is you need i need my laptop to be honest most laptops consume about 50 to 100 watts so let's say an average 75 watts and you have two laptops in your house so set 275 watt that's 150 note it down 150 the third thing is lighting points if you are using the incandescent bulb in your house like those 100 watts bulb that bulb consumes a lot so i would advise you switch it out to led bulbs led bulbs consume between 5 to 10 watts like the normal one the normal sizes so i would say get maybe you can even use like 20 led bulbs in your house 20 LED bulbs is just 100 watts. Instead of using one incandescent, you can use 20 LED. So 100 watts. Note it down. The next is TV. Most TV ranges between 50 watts and um, 120 on the average. If you're using like 32 inches, the the wattage is about 50 watts. If you're using uh, 55 inches LED TV the the range is about i mean it's about 120 watts so let's say you're using a 100 watts tv and you have two in your house that's 200 so the total that i have here is 600 watts now if you have consuming 600 watts and your essential items essential electronics in your house is just 600 watts that you need why would you buy a 3500 watts inverter i would rather advise you that you should go for a 1000 watts inverter 12 volts 1000 watts inverter would take care of your 600 watts essential remember this is not all the items in your house this is just those these are just the essential things that you need if you want to add fridge to it then a 1000 watts inverter might not be the best for you you might have to go to maybe 1500 or 1800 or 2000 but what the calculation we are doing here is for 1000 watts inverter because on the average we realize that okay the essential things in the house that most of us use in a three bedroom two bedroom is about 600 watts let's say 700 watts so a 1000 watts inverter would be good that is it for the inverter so you're getting a 1000 watts inverter the next thing is your battery because in an inverter power inverter system all the two items there are just inverter and batteries so you've gotten your inverter 1000 watts a 1000 watt inverter uses a 12 volt battery most batteries are 12 volts but what we have what we call ah in battery so it's about it's the capacity of the battery that says how big it is so you have batteries that are like 5 ah the ones that you find in uh, rechargeable lamps the ones that you find in in, in, in rechargeable fans they're about 5 ah uh, 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 amps per hour a battery and it ranges from that to about 200 amps per hour battery there are some batteries that are higher than 200 but for example let's just say you are getting a 200 amps 200 amps per hour ah battery that is um, what you you're, you're going to use for your 1000 watts so a 1000 watt inverter a 200 ah uh, battery for me i use uh, that in my house and if that battery is fully charged with the little consumption that i have in my house i'm going to uh, the battery can run for about 
eight hours sometimes between let's say between six and eight hours so if i have power and my battery is fully charged i have six to eight hours electricity that i am i'm running so six to eight hours and i'm good but what if six to eight hours is not enough for you and let's say there's no nepal lights to charge your battery so you need more then that is where solar comes in what is what does solar do remember your inverter system is just your inverter and your battery now when you need to add uh, when you need more electricity or you need more your battery needs to charge more you need solar in a solar inverter you have the panel the solar charge controller the inverter and the battery remember i said in power inverter that is the inverter that you charge with electricity from nepa is just the inverter and the and the battery but in solar now if you are going to be using solar to charge it you need to go further to have two more other things which is the solar panel and the solar charge controller so four basic things so in these four basic things what does the solar panel does the solar panel takes sunlight from the electric from from sun and converts it to electricity and sends it to the battery but it goes first through the solar charge controller solar charge controller acts like the brain for the solar panel it's like let's just say the solar panel doesn't have its own brains to think that okay this is when to charge this is when to stop charging so what solar charge controller does is that when solar is sending electricity to the battery the solar charge controller controls it and says okay the battery needs electricity to charge nine cents electricity to it when the battery is fully charged the solar charge controller say okay the battery is charged stop it's just like your phone when your phone is charging there is something that tells the phone that okay you are at 100 percent now your phone is fully charged stop the same way solar charge controller tells the battery that it has it's charged fully 100 percent so stop because solar panel can't would not know when to stop it will just continue to as long as there's sunlight it will continue to send in electricity and that's what solar charge controller does so in everything now these four things that you need for your solar charge controller if you're using a 1000 watts inverter a 200 ah uh, battery um, a solar panel so i would advise you can get maybe three or four solar panels and solar charge controller maybe a pmw 50 um, solar charge controller the total cost of this thing can range between 300 and maybe 370 or 380,000 naira, and you can and that's your budget so you you might be asking but you said 200,000 naira would get me 24 7 electricity yes it's possible but not this package not this battery so instead of using a 200 ah battery you can actually downsize to 100 ah battery 100 ah battery will give you about half the time that 200 ah battery will give you so with 100 ah battery instead of buying maybe four solar panels you can cut down to maybe two and buy maybe a 1000 watt uh, modified uh, sine wave inverter and with that with a budget of 200,000 naira, you can actually buy that and that will solve your electricity problem so with that you can put all your critical needs so for a 100 ah battery you won't you might not be able to plug in all your devices like oh putting two tvs 20 balls and everything the best thing for it to last for the battery to last longer remember the battery is not as big as the 200 ah this is 100 it's half the capacity so you need to reduce your things to half so you won't be using three fans for 20 bulbs uh, and all the things you might just be using maybe three bulbs four bulbs uh, one 32 inch tv one fan and a few other things all right guys so i believe that 
you've learned something if you have more questions please comment and i can explain further thank you very much